with a three-peat. Make Patrick Mahomes the GOAT, the greatest of all time. I think, listen, uh, greatest of all time is a different argument than I like to bring up that he's the best I've ever seen. Okay. Because to me, Mahomes is the best quarterback I've ever seen, and I love Brady. Yeah. But to me, he's the best quarterback I've ever seen. With his scrambling ability, his improvisation skills, he plays it like a shortstop. He's the best. And I've said that here. I've said that other places. Yeah. So, now, again, historically, the greatest that ever played that is going to become a numbers game. Because if you want to be the greatest that's ever played, they're going to say, well, Brady won seven, you've won three. How are you the greatest that's ever played? Yep. So he's going to have to get to that number. But the one thing if he won this year that Brady would not have would be the three-peat. Yeah, so, so I don't know if he'd have to have the ring, the exact ring count the if he gets the three piece. There you go, he gets Molly. Oh, there you yes. go. Yes! yes. 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 One <laughs> Did I just have, make an intelligent statement that, that, that you not agree with? That, you stole what I was thinking. That's yeah. exactly right. Yeah. If he gets Simpatico. the three peep, that makes up for a Super Bowl or two that he may yeah. not oh, get getting the seven. Yeah. So that's why the greatest is a very significant word there. Okay. Again, in my eyes, I don't know how Stevie feels about it. Yeah. We'll throw it to him in one second. In my <laughs> eyes, he is the best quarterback that I've seen based on all the yep. little skills he has. Yep. All from the a little historical skills. standpoint, Got the Kimberly Martins in 60 years ranking quarterback he needs a couple of other things. Got it. Three Pete Stevie would be one of those. A little that edge. Put him out a little higher. edge. Little a little edge. cheat. Okay. Yes. Okay. Stevie? Stevie? Go ahead, Kimberly. Go ahead, Kimberly. Oh, okay. Um, I, doggy, I'm disappointed in you. What's the matter? Guy who walks around with an almanac in his little, in his little, yeah, there we go, baby. Paper, old school. I mean, Patrick Mahomes was drafted in 2018. He's been a starter, you know, for, I think he was drafted 20, it's been a starter since 2018. Um, you know, it, it, nice couple, nice five years, right? He's done, he's done big things. But you, history, you talk about years, you talk about longevity, you talk about decades. That's what you come to this table and talk to me about. And you want to sit here and tell me, oh, with his little skills, I, I've seen enough to supplant Tom Brady. Has Patrick Mahomes won multiple Super Bowls? Has he won Super Bowls for different franchises? No, he has not. No, he has not. And yet here you sit talking about already he has supplanted what Tom Brady has done over his illustrious career. Doggy, this is a bridge too far. I will not travel with you down this road. That's an interesting point. But, again, historically, just in my eye, if, you, if I had a game to win oh. for my life and you gave me the choice of Brady or Mahomes, I'm taking Mahomes. Because he's really? Scramb because he scrambles. I don't know. He scrambles. I don't know. Who beat who when they went head-to-head? -head? Okay. Uh, well, yeah, Brady uh, won that yeah, championship yeah, game. On that ankle. Yeah. What do you think, Stevie? Brady won the AFC championship game against Patrick Mahomes. He also won the Super Bowl against Patrick Mahomes. And so um, when you look at Patrick Mahomes and his greatness, it's undeniable. And I don't have a problem with people looking at him and his talent and saying he's absolutely phenomenal. Three Super Bowl titles in four years, six straight AFC title game appearances, six straight division titles. His record speaks for itself. He's won 78% of his games. You know, Brady, over the course of his career, won 75% of his games. I think his overall record was 286 and 95. But here's the bottom line. Longevity has to come into play when it comes to some of these arguments. Patrick Mahomes has been absolutely positively phenomenal, and we have no reason to believe that he's not going to be officially the greatest to ever live when all is said and done. It is entirely conceivable that this man can end up capturing Brady's seven Super Bowl titles, and he doesn't need to win seven in order to be the greatest of all time. I'm certainly not implying that, doggy. Mike Tomlin, we all know. We all love him. Very few people love him as much as me. I, I, I love him. I love what he represents. I love his success. But I want to say something to Mike Tomlin that I don't think anybody has said to him. Accessibility. You know, when you sit up there and say... When you sit up there and you say, we don't care, respectfully, sir, speak for yourself. <laughs> you don't care. But your players do. Because let me tell you something. When they don't show up and they don't perform, and we're able to chronicle their lack of performance, which compromises your bottom line, of course, they're going to care. See, coaches are fond of saying that. But you know this, Jeff Saturday, better than me, better than Doggy, but Doggy, you know it better than most with 40-plus years in the business of your Hall of Fame career. There's a whole bunch of people, practically everybody, that would mimic what Mike Tomlin said. We don't care. Very few mean it. He does. I have no doubt about that. But the players 
do care. And oh, by the way, they should. Because if people are talking about you, it's either because you did good and you're receiving the claim for that, or you did bad and you're being called out for it. So that indifference that he's talking about, respectfully, again, speak for yourself. Because I have no doubt Mike Tomlin is sincere about him. Yeah. Those 53 brothers he got on that roster, I beg to differ. They don't care. I don't give a damn what they say. Trust me, they care. Yep, I guess it depends who you seek approval from. Uh, Stephen A., what is the bigger debut, Russell Wilson for the Steelers or Kirk Cousins for the Falcons? For me, it's Russell Wilson uh, because I think his career is on the line. If Russell Wilson doesn't succeed here, particularly with the way he looked in Denver, um, the way he was pushed out of town by, by Sean Payton and the Denver Broncos, primarily due to financial reasons, I think we have to concede that. He wasn't awful last year. Uh, you know, only had eight interceptions, I think about 26 touchdowns. Bottom line is, when you look at Russell Wilson, he doesn't appear to be what he once was, and most importantly, he doesn't garner the respect he once did. And because of that, representing a franchise like the Pittsburgh Steelers, a storied franchise, six Super Bowl championships on his resume and what have you, it's one of those situations where he's got to show up, being paid $1.2 million dollars, having a team pay him $37.8 million just to go to hell away. Um, you're looking at him knowing he's not the future. If Kirk Cousins doesn't show up in Atlanta or this year or whatever, he's coming off an injury. It might take him a while to get going. There's a lot of things to look at in regards to Kirk Cousins to explain what potential struggles may exist. That's not the case with Russell Wilson. Nobody's going to buy it. If he struggles, it's going to be because he ain't what he used to be and he's never going to be that again. And his epitaph will be in the process of being being written. I think it's more important for him, a bigger debut with the new team. I think that goes for Russell Wilson. His career could be on the line. I'll go Cousins and then with thought to Jeff. I'll go Cousins, Steve, only because the Steelers are sort of the way they do things. It's a team concept. Wilson, they won't let him go too crazy. Make a few plays, manage the game properly, rely on our good defense. Atlanta needs the quarterback to play really well. I mean, because they don't have a great defense. I know they added a couple guys, right. but, you know, theoretically, they need to have him play really well. They spent a fortune to get him. He's got Penix behind him. I think he's got – we all know that the owner, Blank, wanted the you – know, he's getting old, like Jones. He wants to have a chance to win a championship. He thinks Cousins after Ritter and Mariota would be the next best thing. So I think because the Steelers are such a great organization and they can figure out a way to get the most out of Wilson, Cousins has to be good. And if he's good, Atlanta can be pretty competitive. So I think because of that, the quality of the team, I'll say Cousins' more important debut there this week down at uh, Mercedes-Benz.